Our kitty cat's adventures in the palace continue. Three episodes in and her fame has spread, so much so that even the emperor requests her services. I wonder who we have to thank for this. <laughs> By order of the emperor, Mama shows up at the crystal pavilion to look after concubine Lihua. Yet, Mao Mao receives anything but a warm welcome from the ladies attending the sickly concubine. They repeatedly cast her out of the room and refuse to let Mao Mao actually treat the patient. Nor will they change her diet so it's something that Li Hua can actually digest. It's only thanks to Jin Shi that Mao Mao is finally able to go near Li Hua, and in so doing realizes that one of the ladies invading is still applying the toxic face powder. That's right, the very same that killed the babies, in spite of it being banned from the palace. Furious, Mao Mao goes on a tirade that ends up frightening all the girls into compliance. Mao Mao has the woman clean and bathe their lady, while she takes time to slowly and painstakingly feed and bring her back to health. The treatment takes months, but Mao Mao succeeds in the end, and the lady eventually recovers. Throughout all this, Mao Mao manages to connect with her charge, who is still distraught over the loss of her child, and wonders if she'll be able to have children again. As a farewell gesture, Mao Mao not only offers words of encouragement, but also imparts some unconventional advice. Turns out there's all kinds of things one can learn in the Red Light District. But will her ample knowledge be enough to solve the next case involving a strange fire? and the mysterious skin affliction? I love how Apothecary Diary stays true to its original material, which was already fantastic. Its compelling storytelling translates seamlessly into an outstanding anime adaptation, making it my favorite show this season. And believe me, that's saying something because there are some truly excellent shows this season. Now viewers can rejoice because the anime adaptation is staying remarkably faithful and I have not noticed any significant omissions. However, your magpie did uncover a few delightful nuggets to fill in this section. In episode 4, when Mao Ma was talking to the emperor, she describes him as a virile man in his prime, understanding why he's popular with the women in the rear palace. Despite his appeal, his appearance doesn't particularly captivate her, except for one curiosity. That's a really long beard, she thought. I wonder what it feels like to touch. This moment highlights her endearing curiosity once again. Now, regarding the food provided to Liwa by the ladies in waiting, they were not as thoughtless as was portrayed in the anime, feeding her whole crab and various other really heavy meals. The light novel says that her current meals were based on bland kanji, but it was frequently topped with things like deep-fried fish, broiled pork, and other rich and nutritious foods that were just too heavy. Despite the heaviness and how much she disapproved of the meals, Mao Mao found these delicacies tempting at times, even causing her to salivate. I was, however, somewhat let down by the scene where Mao Mao reacts to the face powder. I believe the anime didn't convey the intensity captured in the manga panels. In the manga, Mao Mao appears truly terrifying, whereas in the anime, her expression lacks the same depth. Additionally, in the light novel, Mao Mao asked, who would be happy to be continuously covered in poison that sucks their life away, instead of asking, who would be happy to be covered in poison that killed her child? The light novel also mentions that after pulling the woman about, Mao Mao actually ripped out strands of dark hair from the woman's head. It's no surprise that, as the novel states, Liwa's ladies in waiting were utterly terrified of Mao Mao after that incident. Interestingly, this reaction saddened Mao Mao a bit. The light novel says Mao Mao might not show much emotion, but she had a warm heart, and it honestly hurt her to see people regard her from afar as if looking at a devil or a monster, and she had to convince herself that she was merely doing what was necessary to save Lady Li Hua. The anime beautifully depicted Mao Mao's painstaking efforts to restore Lady Li Hua's health, highlighting her remarkable patience and determination. The scene culminated in an exhausted Mao Mao collapsing on a bench and falling asleep, 
and I was pleasantly surprised when I saw Lady Liwa quietly sit next to her and gently stroke her hair and watching her sleep, seemingly grateful for all that Mao Mao had done for her. Despite her toughness and resilience, Mao Mao, just like anybody else, craves gentleness, and despite her prickly exterior, she's not heartless. So this moment was deeply appreciated, even if it only took place while she was sleeping. Another anime-only part that was uh, just so soft and honestly tugged at my heartstrings was during the scene where Liwa asks Mao Mao why she didn't just let her die. Mao Mao points out that despite what's happened, Liwa still has the will to live, and Liwa seems to agree. The light novel and manga move on to the next thing, but in the anime, her agreement is accompanied with a poignant sequence. It shows her reminiscing about her baby, revealing the deep affection and love she had for him. Witnessing Li Hua gently holding her baby's wee little hand, followed by a shot of him peacefully sleeping, it reminds us that he is now eternally slumbering. This brief glimpse into her mother's heart was conveyed through a few simple shots and accompanied by a few delicate piano chords. Despite its simplicity, the sequence was masterfully executed, so much so that for the first time, I truly felt the weight of Li Hua's loss, and it was utterly devastating. Before this, I perceived her as the foolish, proud concubine that was too arrogant to heed advice that could have saved her son. I'm sorry to say that in my heart of hearts, I thought that she just got what she deserved. But thanks to this episode, I feel like I can genuinely empathize with her pain and finally get a real sense of the grief she's experiencing. This episode once again highlights the harsh reality faced by the women in the rear palace, where survival is a constant struggle in a heartless world. Romance and love, as the world outside knows it, are absent, and even children are mere pawns, tools used to secure favor and status with the emperor. All this added context only deepens the tragedy of their lives. It leaves me pondering the potential emotional and personal toll that Mao Mao might have to pay if she continues to reside in such a place. Or if she does leave, then at what cost? As she successfully completes each task she is given, she is making herself more and more indispensable to the rear palace and its workings, and I doubt that they'll let this little kitty go without a fight especially as more people seem to be claiming her as theirs, like in episode 5. In episode 5, Mao Mao employs her knowledge to unravel a mystery involving peculiar substances that make fire change colors, a burnt dress, and a eunuch's rash. While these issues are seemingly resolved swiftly, I get the feeling that they will resurface later on in the story. However, the primary focus of episode 5 are the preparations for the upcoming garden party. All four of the Emperor's top consorts, including concubines Liwa and Gyokyo, are set to attend. That means Mao Mao's gotta be there too, playing the role of Gyokyo's lady-in-waiting. Not her favorite thing, to say the least. However, she decides to make the best of it, and as word spreads around about Mao Mao's inventive skills and preparations, her workload skyrockets. She's not just busy creating items for her lady and the other ladies in waiting, but also for Jin Shi and even the Emperor himself. On the day of the party, the other ladies in waiting crowd around Mao Mao to do her makeup, excited to give Mao Mao a makeover, only to inadvertently reveal her secret. Her freckles are actually the work of makeup, which Mao Mao applies on her face to act as a natural camouflage and deterrent against potential threats due to her past work around the red light district. When he sees her, Jinshi is struck by Mao Mao's natural beauty and delves deeper into her background, even going so far as to apologizing for how she ended up at the palace, and even gives her one of his hairpins. Gyokyo, who had previously marked Mao Mao as hers with a necklace, sounds sad at Jinshi's gesture. However, Mao Mao herself is puzzled by Gyokyo's reaction. There seems to be a deeper significance to Jinji's gift, although we're still in the dark about what it really means. 
As the garden party commences, unbeknownst to everyone, a sinister force lurks in the background, leaving us to wonder if the party will turn into the backdrop for a dramatic event to take place. Now, let us talk about the mystery with the eunuch. Given the preview in last week's episode and today's opening scene, I expected that guy to play a major role in episode 5. Surprisingly, Mama swiftly figured out the situation and provided him with the necessary medicine, all within a single scene. There is a little bit more breathing room in the light novel, where it is explained that as Mao Mao treated the eunuch, going so far as to apply the ointment on his hands, the eunuch remarked that she was a very kind young woman. Turns out that most serving women in the rear palace look down on eunuchs. As for how Mao Mao came to know about the different colored fires, it wasn't through her work as an apothecary. According to the light novel, as a child, she happened to overhear a fireworks maker sharing his craft secrets with a prostitute in the brothel. In preparation for the garden party, Mao Mao unexpectedly found herself making items for the emperor. It turned out that Gyokyo had let slip Mao Mao's ideas during one of the emperor's nighttime visits. The following day, the emperor's personal seamstress and chef approached Mao Mao, eager to learn her techniques. When Jinshi also requested that she do the same for him, Gaoshen, feeling guilty about his master overburdening Mao Mao, pitches in to assist her. In the anime, when Jinshi first sees Mao Mao after her makeover, he appears utterly dumbfounded, the sight of her rendering him speechless for a moment. This reaction was more exaggerated compared to the light novel and manga, where he was surprised but not to the same extent as depicted in the anime. Personally, I liked how the anime did it better. One important detail that the anime didn't emphasize as clearly is that on top of putting clay on her face, Mao Mao used to also tattoo her freckles when she lived outside the palace. Over time, these tattoos would fade, so she had to reapply them. It was on the day she went to the fields to check on the plants she used for her tattoos that she was captured by the men, as her fading tattoos had given her away. Right at the beginning of the episode, we're treated to a sight of a shirtless Jinshi engaging in early morning sparring, triumphing over an equally muscular opponent. Despite the chilly autumn weather, they seem unfazed by the cold. Not that I'm complaining though, but it does make me wonder, can a eunuch genuinely become that muscular or is Jinshi just a special case because he's a main character and must therefore be treated extra special? Well, I guess we'll just have to leave that as one of Jinshi's mysteries for now. No need to spoil the fun. And speaking of fun, I absolutely love the additional scenes of Mao Mao hunting for mushrooms and her genuine excitement at her discoveries. It was as adorable as her little dance of joy when she first entered the pharmacy to make medicine. Episodes 4 and 5 brilliantly unraveled the layers behind the palace's facade. Episode 4 exposed the genuine grief of a concubine, revealing the depths of a mother's sorrow over her lost child. In episode 5, we learn how Mao Mao's survival instincts led her to hide her true beauty, a necessary shield against potential exploiters. Jin Shi too defies expectations. Beneath his eunuch's robes, he exudes raw masculinity and virility, a stark contrast to his delicate appearance. In contrast, Mao Mao, the unassuming and scrawny girl, transforms into a beauty when she takes off her makeup. Both characters maintain facades, Jinshi for strategic allure, and Mao Mao to conceal her true allure. In this world, the necessity of hiding one's authentic self behind a carefully crafted image cannot be overstated. And speaking of Jinshi, I don't know if he's fallen for Mao Mao, but he certainly was captivated, if not smitten with her. It's ironic how he, accustomed to adoration as he is, has started to fall for the one person who will not give him even a modicum of attention, leaving Jinshi to grapple with the unfamiliar sting of rejection. Why does she dislike him so? I believe there are many layers to it, but it is partially explained in the light novel. 
it is revealed that a great part of her aversion stems from his obvious flaw. When something was too beautiful, the light novel explains, one started to feel that the remotest blemish was like a crime, unforgivable. And though the exterior might be lovely, there was a question of what was within. Poor Jinji. <laughs> now, the palace has proven so far to have very interesting characters that are wonderfully fleshed out as we delve further into their story. So I look forward to learning more about these additional characters that were introduced to us this week and to see the dynamics between them. Additionally, I think there's going to be some mischief with poison. I don't know what's going to happen, but with Mao Mao around, I think things will take an interesting turn. I hope you enjoyed these episodes as much as I did. I will see you on the next review. Until then, bye bye. Freckles, flat chest. Unfortunately, there's not a great demand for the skin and bones look. I would like to thank you all for coming on such short notice. And who's the arrogant looking woman supposed to be? Heesh, what a waste. Great A quality genes and no way of proliferating them. Why me? Did I step out of line somehow or? Wait, is this because of the warning? Of course! I've really gotta go! Now, now, miss. Didn't you read?